Ok, ahora sí. Ahora sí, qué pena. Eh, de nuevo, muy buenos días para todos. Eh, bienvenidos a la décima sesión del curso de nanotecnología para la administración de fármacos herbales a cargo del profesor Jaswan Patá. Eh, profesor Jaswan, thank you very much for, for your, for your uh, time, for, for this excellent course, and welcome to the the 10th uh, lecture. Muchas gracias, Professor Caesar. It's my pleasure to be here and it's almost 20 days now, completed, yeah. So, two more lectures to go. So today, it is a very interesting topic I'm going to talk. Uh, it's neither nanotechnology nor herbal, but more related with the college life. And we are facing a lot of challenges in United States. So I thought that I will interact with you all to see how these challenges are coming up in America and how they are happening in Colombia. I don't know, I want to learn more about that, uh, what is happening. So, is it the end of the beginning or beginning of the end, the mental health of college students? So that is what we would like to understand and all of us go through this as a college student. We feel like I need to quit now. I don't want to work, I don't want to study, I want to go home. And then you start pushing yourself and you know, you ultimately make it. So it is very interesting to look at how it is happening in the United States also. So, Buenos Diaz, good morning, Amo Colombia, Ila, Gente de Acqui, mi nombre es Yashwan Patak, actualmente estoy in, in, in the USA. Soy profesor y decano asociado in, en la Universidad del Sur de Florida, Tanilla College of Pharmacy. Estoy en Colombia como becario Fulbright Specialist. A sincere thanks to Universidad Distrital Francisco Jose de Caldas for hosting me as a Fulbright Specialist here in Bogota. My sincere thanks to Rector Dean and other administrative heads supporting my trip here. My sincere thanks to Fulbright Specialist Commission of Colombia for supporting my trip to Bogota, Colombia. Uh, I will fail if I do not mention my uh, sincere gratitude to handsome Professor Caesar Aurelio Herano Pierre. Am I right? He's handsome or he's not? <laughs> Being my host and incredible support for making my stay happy here. Special thank to Reem Abdulohum and Shannon Fleming of World Learning, Sergio Villamil Sanchez and Sebastian, Sebastian Villamizar and many other from Colombian Fulbright Commission for their kind support, Professor Luis H. Reyes, Juan C. Cruz, Willy Moreno, Luis Fernando, Cruz Quirego, Quirogo, and special thanks to Professor Alexis Ortiz, from International Office, UDF, JDC, Alvaro Vasquez, who encouraged me to apply for the Fulbright Specialist Fellowship for Colombia. Encouragement of all is so supportive outcome is I am here. Desde el fondo de mi corazón. And I want to mention these two professors, Luis H. Reyes and Juan C. Cruz, because what happened is we have been communicating with each other for almost one and a half years and we are working on a book so now the book is accepted by the publication so we will be working on the book and it will be published next year by Taylor and Francis the international publisher so I'm very happy to work with him yeah yeah they are good you know it is on nanoparticulate drug delivery system for proteins and peptides 
So I have edited a lot of books with many people from different countries. I like to work with people from different countries. So apologies for my Spanish pronunciation. If you understand my Spanish, then you will surely understand my English too. Miss Disculpas, pour me a Spanol. Sounds good? Sounds perfect. Perfect. Mucho perfect. <laughs> <laughs> learning, learning. So it is very important to understand how the university college students are undergoing many mental stresses. And it is a very challenging scenario in United States, especially the difference between pre-COVID and post-COVID has become very big. And we have a lot of problems, a lot of problems. So what is happening is one in four students have a diagnosable illness. One in four students. So if you walk in the corridor, you will see so many students, but when you start talking to them, you'll find that three are healthy, but one has a problem. That is what in America it is the calculation. And in America, they say that 70% of the American population has some or other mental illness. Small, small, big, whatever, but they have problem. And that's why in this year, there are more than 580 mass shootings. Mass shooting means at least four people killed at a time. So you are looking at 580 into two minimum. And recently there was a mass shooting in Maine where 18 people will be killed. So most of these people, if you look at their history, you'll find that they had mental problems. And many go to their college time. Many go to their military time. They see, they do lot of people have problems because they went to Middle East and Iraq war, Afghanistan war, this war, that war, now Hamas war. So the American few soldiers do all these things and then they come back and they have a post-traumatic syndrome, you know. So 40% do not seek help. They don't even talk about their mental illness. They just walk around, talk around. But if you observe it properly, then you can find out that this boy or girl was not behaving properly and that is how the teachers and faculty and friends have to be involved to identify the mental problems. So 40% do not seek help, 80% feel overwhelmed by their responsibility. So many times what happens is students are aggressive. So they will take a lot of AP courses in matriculation so that they will reduce the college level. Then they take 18, 19 to 20 credit hours per semester. So they want to finish their degree as early as possible. And that's where the pressure starts building it up because their body and mind cannot take that kind of pressure. And that is where they are overwhelmed by the responsibilities of education, teacher, and most of the American students, they work. So they are working 20 hours a week, plus 40 hours a week of education, plus studies, plus homework, plus alignment, so they have no time. They cannot think and that is what overwhelming happens to them. And 50% have become so anxious that they struggle in the school. So what happens is you see certain students <laughs> when they join, they are very bright. By the time second year, fourth semester, their grades go down because they become anxious whether I can complete the course or not, whether I can take these mini credit hours or not. Am I really good for? And then people leave the courses. So we have so many students, they join, do first year, do second year and quit. And then they go to different area, then go to third area. So I had a friend who was graduate student for 14 years. <laughs> he used to like to be graduate student. And his wife was nurse, so she was earning good money. So he was enjoying college. But he could not make up his mind. Every time he will take a project, but halfway leave it. So the professor will give another project, then change the professor like that. He shuttled between the... Because he, could, he was always anxious whether he can do it or not. The confidence was not there. And that is where I am using some of the quotations here to help to understand. So the African traditions, more on African tradition, they say that one who loves you, warns you. That is African tradition. So if you are going to a bad line, 
then your parents will warn you because they love you. If you are going into a bad direction or getting into drugs or getting into alcoholism or getting into all sorts of things, then you, you should have a good friend to tell you don't do it. If you do not have a good friend, then you lose. And that's why one who loves you, warns you. And we need to understand that warning is important for you because before everything is lost, you should learn to take the warning properly. And this is where uh, this alarming statistics is very uh, interesting to see that. Now, I have a quotation by Nelson Mandela, another very famous person. So he said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Now, when you enter in the uh, education system, you should have a high aim. I remember when I was a student in the seventh grade. I just drink little water. Here. So, when I was in seventh grade, my teacher used to tell us to write a good thought on the blackboard. So, every day, every student, one student will have to come up with a good thought. So, next day, another thought. Third day, another thought. So, every student used to get turn to write the thought because he has to come early, write the thought there and something he has to study and they should not repeat the thoughts. <laughs> so, they will remember. They will not repeat the thought. So, from 7th grade, which is like almost 55 years back, I still remember one thought in my mind and that says low aim but not failure is a crime. So, if you enter in the college with a very low aim, like I want to make money, that is a low aim. But if you want to put an aim like this, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Now, this is a very high aim. Once you keep the high aim, then you are, you can control your mental problems. You know, I have seen many people, uh, especially in the nursing, when you work in cancer hospital or big hospital, you really work very hard. But why they work very hard? Because they want to change. They want to change the person to whom the person is taking care of. And this is where you should have a higher aim. Once you have a higher aim, you don't have mental problems. If you have a lower aim, you have mental problems. So you have to learn this. And that is what the faculty has to teach the student. That don't look for small things. If you look for small things, like you know, I teach my students and I tell them that you understand the principle behind what I am teaching. Don't think that it will come into exam or not. Because if you work for examination, then it's a small aim. But if you work for learning and acquiring knowledge, that is a bigger aim. And this is where we have to educate our students to see that their mental problems are reduced by this thing because you, you are keeping a bigger line. And that is where, so what happens is, what they are finding it depression, first problem. Second is anxiety. Third is suicide attitude. Fourth is eating disorders. And fifth is addiction. So these are the five major problems which are faced by college student. Do you think they are faced here also in Colombia? Yeah. They are there? You yeah. can see those. Yeah. Hearing oh really you can see that. So these are the major problems in our universities also. Now when you enter in, if you put this as a first slide on your class, education is the most powerful weapon. I want to change the world. Now you are giving them a different mission. So, during education, the faculty and the professor should also build up some mission for them. Because they are young, they don't know. You have to mold them and you have to make sure that they are good in their whole life. And that is why this is the beginning of your college student life. In the beginning, if you learn good things, then you don't have problems. And that's why do I wish to change the world or be the victim of my mental disorders? Now, this is the question. So, if you put these two things in front of the student, then the student starts thinking, oh, that's true. I should not be victim of my mental disorder. So, I should be strong. And to make him strong, to fight these mental disorders is the job of friends, colleagues, professors, 
administrators and the society also. So it is not an individual's work. It is always a teamwork. People have to work together to make sure that every member of the society is healthy mentally. And depression, when you look at it, you know, it is always a consideration that no one wishes to have dark days. No, no, everybody wants nice sunny day, correct? Nobody wants, like, sometimes in Colombia, I have seen in Bogota, you don't feel like getting off the comforter. Because it is all rainy, mm -hmm. it is cloudy, you know, like England. <laughs> you know, in England, 300 days are like this. <laughs> so I am from Florida, so I love it. I am from India also. So I love sunny. We always keep the windows open. The air should come and fresh air. That makes you, you know, you can control the mental disorder there. So no one wishes to have dark days, sleepless nights, grumpy mornings. This endless dark tunnel with no sign that it ever ends. Depression is not a choice. You know, you should be very cautious that you never get depressed. And you have to take care of that. You, you are responsible for your own thing, nobody else. So, and depression is a bad area. Once you get into that area, it is very difficult to come up. Because you don't know how you entered in it. That is the so symptoms of depression differ from person to person. So every person has different genes. Every person has different mentality. Every person has different upbringing. So symptoms of depression vary from person to person. So there is nothing like everybody has this type of symptoms. Symptoms vary from person to person. And depression is a result of chemical imbalance in our brains. Depression doesn't happen overnight. Depression takes time. And that builds up over the period of time when the liquids or serotonin and dopamine in your brain, there, there is an imbalance. That imbalance is created many factors. We will see some of those factors. So this imbalance has to be avoided. And that's why in order to, suppose you sit only alone and don't do anything for 24 hours, then you are beginning to get into depression. So first thing is to get the bike and ride. Yes. Because, <laughs> yes, because that is how you have to train your mind, because you are responsible for your mind. So you take, go for walk, go for swim, go for bike ride, nothing, look at the flowers, look at, do something, get out of that system. And that is where you have to learn uh, how that chemical imbalance, because in the beginning you start feeling that uh, something is wrong with me. In the moment you start feeling something is wrong with me, then you have to work on it. If you don't work on it and you think that, oh, this is normal, this is normal, then you go down. And that is where always they say that if you have good friends, good friend circle, you are better off. Because they keep you busy. They take you out, they take you to oh, have a cup of coffee, we go there. And then you discuss, you know, now you are... The dopamine, serotonin, all those things, balance is maintained. And if you do not have friends, the so most of the mass shootings were done by people who never had any friends. Because they were thinking for themselves. Always, continuously thinking bad, 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 bad. Took a gun, kill the people and go out. And kill themselves. We had a very big massacre in Virginia Tech. And one... Korean student, he used to go to church every day and when if one of my colleagues, I don't know, his name was there on one of my slides, Daniel Lee. So this Daniel Lee was a professor, Korean professor. He used to go to the same church. He saw the kid every day, every, every week, Sunday prayers. But nobody in the church, nobody in the classroom, nobody in the university thought that he had a problem. And one day he took a AK-47 went to the classroom, from one classroom, shoot, 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 killed 38 people and then killed himself. Now this could have been avoided. If people would have pointed it out, you would have, it could have been avoided, but people lost their lives. That is the depression. And ultimately depression is a result of chemical imbalance in our brains. The way one person displays sign of depression is not necessarily the depression emerges in other people. So it is, we have to understand that every person will manifest depression in a very different way. And similar, similarities 
uh, do occur, but how each person reacts and behaves is determined by how uh, they handle the change. You know, sometimes it is very difficult. Suppose you are coming from Moriflores village and now suddenly you come to Bogota. Big difference. And the kids cannot even talk to other people. They cannot show that I am stupid or I am from village. So they try to show that I am different. I am, I am a Bogotonian. <laughs> but it doesn't happen because your mind is different. You know, Professor Caesar was telling me that some of the students from Bogota go to America and they come back in two months because the life is so different there. There is no family. There is no interaction. Here it is very difficult to talk in the restaurant because everybody is talking. <laughs> Restaurants are very loud here. Correct? I don't understand. I am staying in a hotel here, hotel boutique. So 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, I get the noise of people talking. <laughs> and my room is on 6th floor. But Carferas from the Corferias. Corferias. So people are talking, walking, talking, walking and loudly. They are not thinking that it is 2 o'clock in the morning, people are sleeping. And in America, even in midday, 12 o'clock, you will not hear any voice. No voice. Every day. No voice. So I can understand that if a person from Mori Flores goes to America, he will be back in one month. Because, you know, I was in Mori Flores and I went to a family. It was a Colombian family. So they wanted to make arepas. I have all the pictures I made. I helped them to make the arepas, put it in the stove. But and they didn't bring arepas. No, because they, they were making the so many things for some families around. Yes, yes, yes. It was very interesting to see. But while making the arepas, you know how many people were there? 15, 16 people were there. The relative, the father-in-law, the mother-in-law. So I shook hands with everybody. One lady was, the great-grandmother was 92 years old. She was sitting there and watching. You know, this is family. And this reduces the depression. I don't think those people will have depression any time. Because they are working. Arepas, you know, it's not easy to run the machine. <laughs> it takes time. I did that. So this is where we have to create atmosphere in environment in college also. That they should not feel lonely. Otherwise, they will suffer. So how they handle change, where they are in their life, and their susceptibility to depression is very important and you have to identify that. In so there are certain things, certain people, when they come into the college, they start thinking, every thought is a battle. You know, when I come into the class and Professor Caesar is teaching, and I don't understand, that is the battle for me. <laughs> every breath is a war. And I don't think I am winning anymore. Now this is how the thing starts. I will give you my life story. I was very young. I moved from one place to the village to the city. So in India, it is very interesting that we never, means till I got married, I never shook hand with any girl because that was not, not practice. So we will keep the girl and boy far away. So because I was coming from a village, they put me on the girl's side. So I was so depressed. I thought, oh my God, no. But afterwards I became good. You know. <laughs> so, because I am coming from village, they were ragging me, you know, ragging. They, they were mistreating me. So, and then I learned this. So, you have to stand up and say no to these things. And that is where they, you know, it is very difficult for Colombians to understand that. Because in India, we do, we are, we grow, in my class there was no girl. So, I never had any interaction with the girls. I will have only interaction with my mother, my sister, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, and we are having arranged marriages. In my days, there were no love marriages. Nobody will talk to each other. Many a times, you marry the girl you have never seen. 
I'm just joking. <laughs> so, depression symptoms are physical well-being symptoms. So, changes in sleep habits. Many a time the person who is depressing in depression, his sleep habits will change. I had a student, he was master student. And he was suffering from depression. He was from Azerbaijan. And he could never get up till 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. And he will never attend the classes. So we were wondering what is happening now. So I talked to him, you know, very nice kid, very brilliant, no problems with his intelligence and nothing. But he was depressed because he came from Azerbaijan and he didn't have anybody from Azerbaijan. And he had a girlfriend who was back in Azerbaijan. So now it was very tough for him to work. So finally his father came and his father stayed in Tampa for six months. So his father used to make him get up at seven o'clock, take a shower, bring the college. And then the, the he, he was normal later. Now he is director of one institute. Yes. You know, that's why I'm saying it is not the end of the beginning or beginning of the end. It is temporary phase and we'll see that. So this student was my student very tough to, I mean, very difficult for him to adjust with the American scenario. So his father came and then I, I took extra effort. I worked with the boy. I took extra effort to work with him. I gave him a lot of, lever, you know, little bit leverage that I knew that he has a problem and I don't want him to be a bad person. And with his father and me, I, I always take my lunch to the office so I will sit outside near the lake for lunch because I enjoy sitting outside. So his father will come and his father will talk to me and he will always hold my hand and say, you saved my boy, you saved my boy. You know, this is how it happens. And the father was very happy. Subject. Now he, he is back. He is director of one lab for Azerbaijan government. Got married last year with a nice girl and I have very good connection. Yeah. Uh, and he owes me. Now he says that I owe you because my life, you helped me in getting through the depression. So that is how we have to help people to understand. So physical well-being is changes in sleep habits, sleeping more or more frequently, difficulty in sleeping, appetite changes, including either a loss of appetite or overeating. These are some of the symptoms of uh, physical well-being of a depressed person. Then there are emotional symptoms like sadness, you know, the face is gloomy, always sad, you talk to him and he's, oh, uh, that is, he's not, so you have to make him happy. And it becomes the responsibility of the friends. So sadness, feeling of being overwhelmed, feeling of hopelessness, this is the worst part. Every thought is a battle, every breath is a war, that is hopelessness, I cannot do anything. So this type of hopelessness happens in the minds of college students. In the high school or in the middle school, elementary school, this is not there. But as you come into college, the competition is so high that you start facing that you are a hopeless person. And I am not winning anymore. That is. And then there is a feeling of hopelessness, a feeling of powerlessness. This is there. So you have to build up his confidence. And that's where, you know, I like Professor Caesar. He, he goes for bike ride. So you take two people with you, bike ride, and while riding the bike, let them win. Now you build up their confidence, even though they he drive the bike much better than the student, but he will lose. Sometimes you gain if you lose, because somebody else is benefiting for that. Then it is worth losing. But if you don't want to lose and you keep on gaining, then the people who are working with them, they become powerlessness. They feel hopelessness. And that is why we have to learn to lose to make sure that other people gain. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it is very important in life. Like a father is very important. Then the father is very achievable. Then the son feels like hopeless. Oh my God. Now I cannot compete with my father. I'm done. So this feeling is their hopelessness. That leads to depression. And then thinking symptoms are seeing a glass half empty. Always he will talk negative. Continuously, no positiveness. You know, glass is empty, half glass, but half glass is full. You can look both ways. And that is where the 
thinking syndrome, having trouble concentrating, paying attention, resulting in difficulty in reading and completing work tasks. This is the problem. So you will find some students always keep on drawing in the classroom. They are not attending to the lectures. They will, they are not interested. Or they don't cannot concentrate. And that is where the problem starts. So many a times I have a habit of I walk through the classroom. So I find it out. So one day I was talking to, I was entering in the class and one girl student came and she told me, Sir, when you talk, all of them are on Facebook. So I entered in the class and I said, Hey, guys, send me the friendship request and I will become your friend on the Facebook and we'll communicate on Facebook. Don't do it here. We can do anytime, 24 by 7. So the student got the idea that now I know that they are on Facebook. And once I walk in between, they know. It's not easy. <laughs> you know, that, that is how you have to create some discipline also in the students, in their mind. And that's why difficulty reading and completing work tasks, these are some of the areas. So now you have to train your mind to read. You know, it is some of the people do not have habit to read. So, and nowadays it is becoming more and more difficult. But reading is something where you sit at one place. You have to be calm. And you have to read. You have to concentrate. And that helps you to get rid of depression. But nowadays, because everybody is using this and reading online, it becomes easy. Yeah. And tell me, you all get WhatsApp messages. How many WhatsApp messages do you really read complete? You don't. Or articles, you don't read completely. Yeah. Nowadays, what is happening is people are not reading completely. They don't. So they don't get the gist. They try to find, oh, this is okay, I know. And that is where the concentration levels go down and people start suffering from that. So how do you know you are depressed? So you can ask yourself the following question. Have you experienced extreme sadness or hopelessness? If you think that, that means the beginning of depression is already started. You are halfway. Does your family have a history of depression? This is another thing. And many a time, you know, it is very interesting to see that women after the delivery, suffer from, they call it postpartum depression. And sometimes that leads to death also, postpartum after the delivery. Because they have a feeling of something lost from the body. Because they carried the baby for nine months, so they are so accustomed to that baby, mm -hmm. that the baby is not there, then they lost. And they think that I, something is wrong with me now. That is called postpartum depression. And there are many reasons, many symptoms. It is varies from person to person. And that's where the history builds up. So if the mother has history of depression, it automatically comes to the children. There is a possibility, that possibility is there. So you have to understand what is the genetic. Some there is a, we haven't yet found out. There is research going on, but they don't know exactly what genes are responsible for depression. But still they are working on that. So have you turned to heavy drinking, drug use or relieve feeling of hopelessness? So this is another reason where, you know, and then have you experienced invasive thoughts of death or suicide? This is most dangerous scenario where you can commit suicide or you can commit uh, death or kill people. So this is some of the questions which you need to ask the people. So now how to prevent it? So depression is the most unpleasant thing I have ever experienced. It is that absence of being able to envisage that you will ever be cheerful again. So once you start getting into depression, you always feel I will never be cheerful. I, they don't laugh even, even if there is a joke, they don't laugh. Even though they understand the joke, but they have no ability to laugh. They, they don't want to have any fun anywhere. They will be, always be lost. And cheerful again, the absence of hope. That's very uh, deadened feeling, which is so very different from feeling sad, sad hurts. It is not, depression and sadness are two different things. Sadness is because of something went wrong. But depression is something going on in your brain. That is very difficult to deal with. So it is, if it is necessary thing to feel depression is a very different, so you have to understand that. So if you begin to notice signs and symptoms of depression in a friend, there are several steps you can take to get them help. And here are some signs of depression to look for. They are not enjoying activities they once loved. Make them to work with you. 
so that gradually they get over the depression. Then you are, they no longer attend the classes or social outing. They are experiencing extreme anger or sadness over a relationship in their life. They react negatively or with apathy to most things and they often talk about death or suicide. So these are the systems you have to find out in your friends and that means they need help. So either like in our university we have a big department, mental behavioral sciences and that department uh, has clinics. So we normally as a faculty, suppose I find out some problem in a student, then what I will do is I will, because this is a, we have a law also that I cannot share that with anybody else. So what I do is I will send it a note to my associate dean for student affairs. Then associate dean for student affairs will invite that student, but he will never disclose that I told. And then he, that person will ask, what is your thing, what are your problems, and then they have training in psychoanalysis. And then if they need help, then they will recommend that you should go to this person and there will be help. And that is done all in writing. And then we monitor the student because otherwise we may be victim of mass shooting. This is where the process has to be followed and there are a lot of good ways they do it and we have very good mental health help for the students. There are a lot of centers where they can walk in, talk to them. They have nowadays we have very interesting after post post COVID, every Thursday at least fifteen to twenty dogs come to library and the students will play with the dog, therapeutic dogs. Those dogs are trained to deal with the depression, deal with the mental problems, and they that help them. And there are regular students who know that they have a problem, they go there. Because they, they are not shy of it, because they know the problem is there and they have to get rid of that problem. So that is the uh, thing, they, so this is what we need to observe in our students to make sure that uh, we can help them. You know, they, they need help basically. So the second one is anxiety. This is another very challenging thing for a lot of people. So it is sad actually because my anxiety keeps me from enjoying things as much as I should at this age. You know, the anxiety, some of the people have anxiety of sea. They will never go to beaches because they have anxiety. They, they think that I will drown or water or rain. They have anxiety of very funny things. And many of them have allergies also, but allergies and anxieties are two different things. And you have to differentiate between them. So there is an obsessive compulsive disorder which is called OCD and this is quite common in many students. They don't understand but you can see it, it is there and then you have to help them to get to some advice and all those things. Then there is another thing which is panic disorder. Many students I have seen before the examination have panic disorder. So you need to put them in the separate room and tell them that don't worry, you know, you sit alone because in front of all the students, they don't want to show their panic disorder. So, and they have, we have a arrangement that the, if suppose the student has any of these, then they in advance tell us. So they go to the student affairs and they disclose that this is my problem. So they will, uh, the student affairs will tell us that you have to make arrangement for the student separately for exam. So I don't know whether that person has panic disorder or not but I am responsible to put up here. So what I will do is I will give the exam in the other room. The student will get exam here. Hello. And you will write, there are some people, some students who have certain disorders where they take more time to write because of their hand mm -hmm. movement or arthritis or the, so we have to give them, all students get one hour, this student we gave one and a half hours. There is no problem actually. But we have to accommodate the thing and this is where the uh, panic disorder is a very important thing and sometimes it is deadly panic disorder. Then there is a post-traumatic stress disorder and social anxiety disorder. Now this thing we are seeing a lot now in the post-COVID. What happened is many of our students come from different cities in America. So many of their 
relatives died in covid grandmother grandfather or parents they died in covid the scenario was that if you are living in tampa and if your parents or grandparent die in new york in covid you could not go so you did not see the dead body of the person because they used to pack up in plastic and throw it and that created a stress in the mind a trauma for our students and that was post traumatic and that stress was very difficult for them to manage there are many students i have seen they will cry and cry and cry and you know so that that's why these dogs and everything all these systems have been created in our college to show that they can be helped and it is very difficult so churches have special program for such students they have a lot of uh, advising counseling and they do that and then social anxiety disorder is another thing which is very interesting that some people don't like to be in the group as soon as they go in social group they start panic and they always will stay at home they will not go in more than 10 people they will not go to the big function no e- events no musicals they will not go because they have a social anxiety disorder they feel like somebody will kill me now this is i had a, one one of my student she completed her phd i told her she was in that virginia tech for 3 years she suffered so much because she saw the killing and it was terrible for her so she used to be always gloomy taking lot of steroids and and it became her body was almost like destroyed because of the medicine but subsequently you know it needs patience to deal with such people and we worked with her she got her phd you now she is married and works for us patent office doing fantastic and i still remember when uh, her defense was finished and the all the committee i was also in the committee i personally went to virginia for that i was knowing that she will need some support so i went there because i was knowing the history also so when she went and she came out and then she outside we came out on the road and then she did like this now i will get married i will do everything i want in my life it was such a great feeling for and even today she considers me as like father and we are very good relationship so if she would not have got the help she would have been in hospital for all her life but you have to build the confidence you have to show that you can do it don't worry and that's how this social anxiety disorder can be changed and faculty can play a major major role in this scenario so symptoms of anxiety are very different so anxiety is one little tree in your forest step back and look at the whole forest so what happens is you become anxious and then if you look, concentrate only on your anxiety then you ignore the rest of the thing so now you have to stay back and see that tree anxiety is only one tree in the big forest and then you start managing your anxiety and this is where you have to learn this and this is a very good quotation i like that that's why so symptoms of anxiety disorders may sometimes be mistaken for everyday stress or simply written off as someone worrying too much you know sometimes people come and say oh professor i think a lot you know i don't know whether i'll do it or not like you think oh don't worry don't worry but sometimes it is not simply worry but it is an anxiety the student has and depending on how your body respond to the increased level of certain chemicals again anxiety is also directly related to the chemicals in your brain management of chemicals as soon as they are imbalanced you start showing the symptoms of anxiety and they, then it comes to panic attacks may be mistaken as physical ailment such as heart attack or tension headache sometimes the student fell down while walking in the corridor and you think that is a panic disorder but you think oh he got a heart attack because you don't know so you call the ambulance and take it has happened few times in my life the student fell down and then we thought there is a but it was not heart attack but it was simply a panic disorder and symptoms manifest differently in each person so what is true for you won't necessarily be true for a friend and common symptoms of the anxiety disorders may include feelings of stress and apprehension irritability trouble concentrating fearfulness sweating and dizziness shortness of breath irregular heartbeat muscle pain and tension headaches 
frequent upset stomach or diarrhea these are all symptoms of anxiety i will give you a very nice story it will be very we had a post doc this post doc came and the post doc was he was not talking to anybody very aloof guy only for himself not talk anything nothing 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 and he was you know he will not mix with anybody so we were worried about this guy because we thought that he has a psychological problems he came from the other country so we thought he has a psychological problems so we tried to persuade him that go and talk to the but he was not ready to accept you know most of the people with anxiety or depression or those, they don't want to accept that i have a problem like people who drink they never think that they are alcoholic they always think i manage i manage but by the time they they have become full alcoholic they don't know that they have become alcoholic and that were they very difficult for them to accept that so this student was was having a cell phone in his pocket so part of the cell phone was out of the pocket now some lady who was in the parking lot she saw him walking like a crazy you know something abnormal she thought that he has a gun in his pocket so she called the 911 so within 10 minutes we were my college was surrounded with the police now this boy was walking and they, so when i as a associate dean i have certain responsibility that our you know administration So I immediately walked around, tell all the faculty that get into your offices, lock the offices. Yes, take stable. Nothing will happen, but we don't know because there is a rumor that one person has, and he looked like this post doc, because the description was similar to the post doc. So I thought, what is happening? So the supervisor of that post doc was a lady. So I saw her. I said, hey, hey, come in my office and sit now. Don't go out. Because she will be the first victim. Suppose something goes wrong, and then the guy was walking. So I was looking at him. And I was a bit scared. I said, "But he was looking lost." So I stopped and asked him, "How are you?" He said, "I am doing good." I looked at his pockets and all those things. So it was a cell phone. I saw that. So I told him that you stay in this room, and then I told that don't go out. and anybody comes or even if somebody comes you take my name that professor patak has asked me to sit here so the, the police checked the every room and they found him out there so they he said that professor patak told me to sit here you are looking like the description of that lady mm-hmm. so we came and then everything was done but then after one month we were required to send him back to his country because he was not ready to take the advice he was not ready to understand and he was not delivering anything so we told him that you have two options either to go to medical treatment or go to your home. country home. so he said i will go home so he went home i don't know what happened to him later but this is how that anxiety is built up now in such anxiety this is a temporary anxiety but if suppose somebody has a panic disorder and if you know that oh there is a guy with gun Standing next door to my office, what will happen? You will show the panic disorder, anxiety, and that's where you come to the picture. So these are some of the interesting symptoms of anxiety, and you can watch it. You can watch your anxiety, and you can control your anxiety if you properly train your mind to do that. So our anxiety does not come from thinking about the future, but from wanting to control it. You know, most of the time, what you do it you want to be very rich mm-hmm. you want to be this now it is not in your hands but it creates anxiety in your mind and you want to control your future which is impossible never ever try to control your future because it is not in your hands it's god decide that so are you experiencing anxious or worrisome thoughts on a daily basis so you have to analyze yourself and this is a good exercise to do analysis do i worry always about things which are not in my hand now it always happens that in the indian community it is very common i don't know how is in colombian community 
in indian community the parents become very anxious when their children become 14 15 years especially the girls and if the girl stays overnight and doesn't tell where she was then our parents are lost they they think that something has gone wrong they are very anxious and a lot of indians in america they come for a good life and good education good opportunity but their parents are in india so by the time you are 45 50 you have double barrel anxiety yeah. one is your children are now teenagers and your parents are old so people get heart attack they in america we say that an indian average person if he doesn't get heart attack between 45 to 55 then he survives 75 <laughs> because by 45 your daughter is 14 15 years old and if she sleeps with somebody that's it he is dead the cultural thing is so bad and then the parents when they die they you don't know so they always tension that that creates anxiety on the contrary in american children we don't have this type of anxiety my neighbor's daughters are like 8 year 9 year old they talk about their boyfriend everything everything they talk to my wife they don't talk to me but those girls are very close to us so it is very interesting to see how the cultural difference creates anxiety it's very different for different societies so do you avoid everyday social activities because they cause you anxiety and this is another thing which a lot of people don't go to public function because they are anxious about that do you experience sudden heart pounding panic attacks and is your anxiety interfering with your school work or social life or family life so this is where you have to ask this question whether this is happening to me or not and then anxiety happens when you think you have to figure out everything all at once this is another thing which you want to know everything which is not possible so you have to take one by one step by step so breathe and you are strong you got this take it day by day if you learn to take it day by day you you will never get anxiety but if you don't learn to take it day by day then you definitely have problem because you want to resolve everything in one day which is not possible so what should you do if you start to notice signs of an anxiety disorder in a friend so college is a stressful time students can expect to deal with a variety of expected and unexpected stressors through their college careers and while stress sources don't necessarily cause anxiety disorder they can worsen the symptom because if you have anxiety then it will worsen in college system or you can really manage it so college is a stressful life definitely because you are learning a lot of new things first thing you have a lot of pressure of education you have to make good grade because your job is dependent on your good grades or your phd or your masters and all these factors are responsible for creating anxiety so many a times now that educating education people or academicians like me are star- have started thinking do we want to put our students to all these pressure is it worthwhile because afterward they don't get the job and then they do simple job they don't need the education for that so do we have is there is a way to find out whether that person so uh, in israel they had a gifted children programs so they identify the gifted children program and put them into army and they do everything fantastic they are very brilliant kids their education system is different for them but the normal students you don't want to create that pressure because they are not you know tomorrow if i am going to be a janitor and clean the bathroom do i need masters in science i don't need it then why i should waste my 6 year and have stressful life for 6 years and then ultimately go there so this is where college is a stressful time and student can expect to deal with variety of expected and unexpected stressors and we have to find out what career you want anxiety disorder they can worsen of symptoms i have seen people who join the medical college after second year when they started seeing the blood they resigned and they went because that created lot of anxiety in their mind so lot of my students come to my office we talk about this medical admission i ask them how do you feel when you see the blood because when you are in medical school you are seeing the blood every day you <laughs> no healthy patient come to you and if you are uncomfortable with seeing the blood then obviously 
you are not fit for medical profession so you should find out other profession this is where there has to be some thought process and training for student to understand what is involved in that profession and that's why we say that if you want to go to pharmacy then work in pharmacy have some training in pharmacy so that you will understand the strength needed for the pro project uh, uh, profession and the stress that profession creates so it is a very interesting scenario especially some of the professions are very tough to live with like you know if a, if you are a surgeon and if you say that i cannot work for more than 1 hour you cannot be surgeon because when you open up the human being you cannot leave the human being open i cannot do it i go home now <laughs> it doesn't work so surgeon has to work 12 hour 18 hour 24 hour if needed he cannot say that i don't want to work but he is paid more also but automatically when you opt to become a surgeon you are comfortable seeing the blood you are comfortable cutting the human body you are comfortable taking it out <laughs> it's not easy you know you imagine that if tomorrow i put professor cedar in the surgery and say hey this is me eastern part cut me here <laughs> not possible so that's you you that creates a disorder and that's where you have to so I appear to live in constant fear of failure academically and socially this is a constant failure fear they have and then uncomfortable extremely anxious in social atmosphere of trouble concentrating seem to have a blank mind seem plagued with guilt or stress they have constantly guilty feeling and finally have visible panic attack so these are some of the anxiety thing So I, I have some data from South. I tried to get some data from Colombia. I couldn't get it because it was all Spanish information. So I couldn't get it. I couldn't understand what it is. But in South African college students, since 1950, the suicide rate of white male is between 50 to 25 has tripled. They, there is a white females between 50 to 25 have been doubled, and in last year, 15 years. suicide rate for black males has risen by 2/3 you know a lot of commit they commit suicides because of the mm -hmm. pressures because of all these mental disorders and they are all young 15 to 24 is college students mostly and furthermore study suggest that as many as 20% of college students have suicidal thoughts at some point in their college career this is where the things come so as i mentioned you know i don't know i told you or not but i was going with one of your student student and faculty both so we were uh, it was raining heavily so i said hey we want to go so she was say i want to do phd did that all thing then rain stop i said let us go to monsaret 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 so it's by too long i said i say look if you want to do phd then if you decide to do it then you have to do it let's go we'll see what happen and we walk there the trolley was working we went there loved it i said every phd if you want to do it you at the point comes in your life i want to quit and then you struggle and then you build up and then you get it but that point you have to overcome and it happens in every phd student life graduate student life that i should not continue i am tired and doesn't work and that time if someone is there if the supervisor is good then no problem because that supervisor knows how to push the student if you have two three phd student then you make it so suicide is the act of deliberately taking one's own life and feeling of guilt hopelessness despair can build when student don't take step to cope with stressors and suicide affects everyone including a victim friend and family you will not believe in usf we had at least three or four suicide during covid period because students stayed in the dorm they couldn't go out they had nothing to do and no family support nothing 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 so they committed suicide one of the boy i know personally because i was involved in his funeral so so suicide three things suicide is another challenge next to anxiety so three things to watch speech suicidal people may talk about feeling trapped feeling as if they are a burden to others that they have no reason to go on and may discuss suicide lot of this mass killing shootings the shooters had such ex thing written on their facebook So nowadays, police in America monitor the Facebook. Everybody's Facebook is monitored because they try to understand that where the clue that this person is going suicidal or going to 
heal the people. That is how it comes down. So your speech and expression is their mood. Individuals suffering from suicidal ideation may display a variety of moods including anxiety, irritability, loss of interest in things, activities, objects they have enjoyed before, humiliation, rage and depression. And some of these people are so methodical that those who did mosh shitting, they were going to the shop, buying only 10 bullets at a time and they accumulated 1000 bullets. Then they got one gun, they got second gun, they got third gun. Then they created nice thing. So it took them to make that planning for mass shooting 3-4 months. You can imagine. And they killed themselves. It's not that they killed other people. They killed themselves also. But that was a suicidal. How it can affect the society. So the mood is uh, challenging. Loss of interest in activities and rage and depression. And people considering suicide may exhibit specific behaviors including giving away possessions that they can be pr once prized. Like if I have a nice iPhone, I will give it to somebody. That means something is wrong. Now you there is a red flag. You know, something which I love, bicycle, I love it, but I give it. That means something is wrong with me because I am now getting ready to commit suicide. That's why you start giving the things. And this is a very good symbol there. A lot of uh, research papers are there on the behavior of suicidal people. Withdrawing from friends and family in inexplicably visiting people to tell them goodbye. You know, go and say bye bye. I don't know, you'll see me or not. That is how they come down. I had a, my friend's son, he had wonderful talk, everything, everything done. He talked to his mother, loved, and you know, all showed as much love he can. And then went to University of Florida and hanged himself. Everybody he met, all the community people and everything, and then went to university and in the dorm he hanged himself. He was not even 19, 20. He was a college student in University of Florida. Unbelievable. Nobody even guessed that he is doing this. But these are the symptoms of it. You don't see it. You haven't read it. You don't read it. You know. So these are the symptoms and sleeping poorly too often, behaving recklessly. So these are displaying aggression, increasing their use of drug and alcohol. So these are some of the things you have to watch and immediately make note of it and tell to the senior people in your university. So that it can be avoided. So what should you do if you start to notice suicidal behavior in your friend? Ask them directly. Are you considering to killing yourself? This may seem blunt. However, according to the AADA, studies show that this question does not increase the likelihood of suicidal thoughts and it is an important foundation for the next step. Make a safety a priority. If the answer positively to step one, ask them if they can have they have any plan. While it may not be easy, removing lethal objects and items in the dorm or home, such as guns, can also make a big difference. Be there for them. Sometimes the most you can do for someone is to simply tell them that you are there, you are helping them. And that can reduce their possibility of committing suicide. Give them tools to help themselves. Save the National Suicide Prevention. There are a lot of lifelines for suicidal. And you can call them and they train you how to overcome this and remain in contact with the person. <clears throat> if crisis occurs or after a suicidal individual is discharged, staying in contact makes big difference and can potentially save the life at risk. We can help them, but it is challenging. So the next uh, anxiety uh, problem for mental order for the college are eating disorder. This is a millions of college students suffer from eating disorder. They don't know they are suffering from eating disorder. Either they don't eat or they overeat. And that is called eating disorder. So you will always find some people are very anorexic. Especially girls you see. I, I see a lot of anorexic girls. They look like almost no meat and nothing, you know, no flesh on the body. So that means there is something wrong with them. And you have to talk to them. And some people are over obese. That is also an eating disorder. So you have both. And eating disorder is a very major mental problem. Millions of college students both men and women alike develop eating disorder during the college years. The vast majority don't seek help or don't realize the extent of their problem. Eating disorders are extreme behaviors, emotions and attitudes that revolve around food and weight perception. So they consider that no, I should look like a, you know, that model. And yeah. then the model is weak and that is how this perception, weight perceptions are built up. Food and weight. And these disorders cause serious mental and physical uh, problems that can result in life-threatening issues 
when left untreated so many people try to commit suicide because of the eating disorders means it's a very interesting thing i had a my friend is a md phd in psycho psychiatry and he had a patient who went on 12th floor and wanted to jump because she could not reduce the weight eating disorder leading to suicidal thing is also quite common and these disorders can ser cause serious mental and physical problems that can result in life threatening issues have been left untreated so to lose confidence in one's body is to lose confidence in oneself once you start thinking that you are not right person your body is not good then problems come and it is a big big stress you you have heard this lady correct simon de bova you have heard she has very very beautiful book she wrote and very famous feminist actually uh, so you have to understand you don't have to look like you have an eating disorder to have one because they automatically show it on your body if you have a dissing dis eating disorder it will be reflected on your body people can understand that this person is suffering from that eating disorders are extremely common among all ages and more than 13 million people in united states suffer from some type of eating disorder and do not feel bad if you suffer one because 30 million is like 10% of the american population has eating disorder problem all of all mental disorder individual suffering from eating disorders have the highest mortality rate they die quickly because of anorexia or overweight but the, their mortality rate is much higher eating disorders and one person dies as a direct result of eating disorder every 62 minutes that is how these things are so bad and it starts in college and continue and males are nearly as likely to develop a disorder as women and due to a cultural views of eating disorders however they don't often seek treatment bulimia and anorexia are seen as women's issue now there is another thing which uh, we have seen is that native american population in america suffers from eating disorder because they get food stamps and food stamps you buy all the heavy red meat and they like to eat and eat and eat and they become overweight diabetic and then they die at very early age same thing is with afro, afro american people if you i don't know you must have seen that in america if you travel around and go to grocery stores you will find very obese afro american people very obese and you never see this you know so you are and now what is happening is obesity is growing in all the country because of the way you, we are working and then that is leading to eating disorders because what is available outside is a more or less junk food you buy the potato chips you buy the corn chips you buy the something which is more junk food you buy french fries and that all adds to the eating disorders in due course of time so it is a very interesting this is very nice statement actually and i said to my body softly that i want to be your friend and then the body said it took it the body took a long breath and then replied i have been waiting for whole of whole life for this you know i tell my body i want to take care of you and the body says oh i wanted you to take care of me for a long time the very beautiful statement for the eating disorders and this is where your the signs and symptoms of eating disorders are vary from person to person condition many depend on mental state of the individual suffering from the disorder however there are several red flags that are common factors like anorexia bulimia binging these include distorted or full poor body image you know many people have poor body image and they think that they are not good and that creates lot of stress in their mind and then they try to be good and this that that and all the thing excessive exercise is another reason because they want to reduce their weight and all the thing irregular heart beats dehydration feeling like eating it is out of control fear of eating in public constantly making excuses for eating habits now i i know several people in my relations as well as in my contact if you see the food they feel like eating doesn't matter whether you are hungry or not that is a eating disorder because you just walk by 
Can you see the Coke bottle? Oh, let me have it. You walk by, you see the potato chips. Let me have it. You must be having friends like that. They just looking at the food, they start eating. They like it. And especially if you are going for buffet. Buffet? Yeah. So the food is readily available. I have never seen a person who comes empty stomach from a buffet. Because you want to take the full benefit of what money you have paid. <laughs> it's more. <laughs> right? It is an eating disorder. And if you can imagine, as a college student, I remember in my first job was in South Dakota. So we used to have a Domino's pizza. And they used to say that at 12 o'clock if you come between 12.30, you get eat as much as you want in $3. So there will be a large number of students running between that 12 to 12.30, eat as much as pizza you want. They used to eat and then over the period of time, you put on weight and that becomes eating disorder. So you can see that who contributes to the eating disorder? All the fast food chains, beautiful advertisements, lovely things. You know, they, I don't know here, McDonald's have those toys for the children. Children don't go anywhere. They want the toy plus the food. And over the period of time, they become obese because of eating the McDonald's food. And this is where the greed of these fast food chains have changed the food habits of people and leading to diseases in the society. You can imagine that how the greed of a corporation can change the society. And we, we are the victim. We go there, they don't come to you to say, eat my French fries. But the advertisement is said that you feel like taking it. And that's where these eating disorders, a lot of greed of corporations contribute to the eating disorders there. So how do you know if you have eating disorders? Here are some questions you ask. Do you refuse to eat food or skip meals? Do you fear eating in public with others? Do you count calories out of a need of, for control? Do you have strict eating habits? They, that you feel guilty and ashamed of breaking. Now, in uh, I th I have seen my friend daughter, she became vegan and she became so weak, anorexic, that she started having problems, health problems. So then now, going back, because vegan is good for you, but it is not a complete food, unless you add the proteins, unless you are carbohydrate, otherwise you are in trouble. So you have to understand that so do you count calories out of need for control? Do you have a history of perfectionism? This is a basic thing. If you want to be perfectly looking, that's it. Then you are going in eating disorder. And are you obese or dissatisfied with your weight or body shape? And you will find that those who are not in body shape, if you talk to them, they wanted to be good looking. But now their body is not cooperating, they start eating more. They say, I don't care now. And they become fat and obese and all those things. You talk to any person, I have talked to many people and they say exactly this has happened in my life and now I cannot go back because high obesity. So do you find yourself eating large amounts of food, then purging and making yourself vomit? Have you avoided eating for a day, then overrate when you become too hungry? Have you noticed excessive hair growth on your arms and face and loss of your menstrual cycle? These are some of the eating disorders symptom there. So what you should do if you think your friend is there, then is your friend skipping meals and only eating small portion? Is your friend suddenly uninterested in food? Is your friend limiting their meals or food? So you can understand these some of the things which you see in your friend and help them. So I intend to accept my body today, love my body tomorrow and appreciate my body always. This is what you have to adopt. Then you will not have eating disorders. So you need to love your body the way it is given by the God. You don't want to compare with the model. Then you start uh, loving your body tomorrow and appreciate the body. And this is sad perfect, you know, if you don't, this is a typical eating disorders is broken play because you are, it's a nice symbol of that. So uh, last is addiction. Alcohol and drug use has become commonplace on majority of college campuses throughout the world. And some students, what starts as a social tradition can become a full-fledged addiction. And addiction is defined as dependency and repeated abuse of substance, such as drugs and alcohol. This is very common in 
our university also and addiction also we means university of south florida has a major problem of date rapes because they go together drink and the boy is smart enough to make the girl drink more and then rape her and the next day she comes to know that she was date raped and it is very common in our our university is known for that actually so don't be in such a rush to figure everything out embrace the unknown and let your life surprise you and i uh, means uh, my personal experience i have contested election we have student body elections in our university when i was a student so our students also will have party after the election is over so they will drink so i will stand up and say i am not going to contribute to the alcohol so i will fight for them and i will say i will not no that is not my cup of tea i will never do that and i have never done it i have never bought alcohol for anybody in my life i have never bought cigarette for anybody in my life i said this is bad and i stand up if i stand up i will make a decision for myself if i become victim of your friend circle then you lose and this is where the strength is very necessary for that and addiction about 25% of the students who regularly drink report academic problem tied to their drinking habit 60% of college students have consumed alcohol in the past month nearly 2 out of 3 of these students engaged in being being drinking add some drugs in the drinks alcohol and then almost 20% college students meet alcohol use disorder criteria so now you can imagine that if you don't control your mind then you will become victim and there are people you know like america they, they when the american stopped smoking all the tobacco company dump the tobacco cigarettes in colombia mexico america india and all the high school students were given cigarettes free that's how they hooked them up and that is where this addiction again the greed of the corporates are a reason for this addiction how do you know if you have developed a drug or alcohol addiction see if you are concerned contact your mental health care provider take an assessment ask yourself the following do you feel uncomfortable when drugs and alcohols are not available do you drink heavily when you are disappointed distressed or get in a fight uh, have you ever been able to un- unable to remember part of the previous evening what you did that means you are addicted <laughs> if you don't know how many drinks you had yeah, yeah. Uh, previous night you are addicted have your blood relatives had an addiction to drugs and do you sometimes want to continue your drug and alcohol use even though it is hurting yourself so addiction symptoms are slurred speech blood shot eyes impaired coordination fear anxiety paranoia uh, prone to suspicious behavior frequently get into fights sudden need for money or financial crisis then you have built tolerance for alcohol and drug use deterioration of physical appearance weight loss or gain change on personal grooming habits and sudden change in friends and activities i have seen many faculty suffering from that and losing their job mm-hmm. because they they came in the classroom mm-hmm. drunk so you can i you to ask this question does your friend drink relieve stress suppress issues have their drinking drug in, interfere with the relationship with others have they withdrawn from activities or school work does your friend life revolve with uh, drug alcohol use have they developed change in personality have you noticed an unused usual smell on their breath body now another thing which is parties in america there are several universities you are known for parties party is this and spring break and after spring break there are abortions it's a very big cycle in america because uh, again i think it is a corporate greed because they try to put advertisement of spring break so much that everybody feels like going to spring break there is no need for it there are some students who never go there so the solutions are let us go back to basics what is this who we are why why who we are we are human being we know we have brain we need to use our brain and why we are here we are here for a change changing the world you know the nelson mandela statement i want to be in college because i want to change the world i'm not here for fun and this is where you start putting up a bigger line for their life and what is my mission and goal for my life and the kingdom of heaven is within you and whosoever shall know himself shall find it out so wake up to your true identity there are 144 empowering proverbs from people of african diaspora telling how to avoid these things so uh, there are ways to you have to find out the way so nobody can teach me who am i i am you can describe parts of me but who i am and what i need is something i have to find out myself so if i am a addict addict 
then I will have to find out. I am addict. I have to get rid of it. I am anxious. I have to get rid of it. I am eating disorder. I have to get rid of. It. So you you have to make your mind. Chinua Achibe is a very famous African writer. Very famous writer. And then there are several help videos. How do you get to know yourself fully? Uh, there are very take care of your. Now this is most important. Half of majority of these mental disorders are causing because you don't care take care of your microbiome in your stomach. As soon as you start eating something which is not good for your health, your microbes are killed. And once the microbes are killed, then automatically your brain chemicals get in balance. And then that leads. So if you give bad food to your stomach, it will drum for you to dance. Very nice African proverb. So if you if you want to control this, then mental disorders can be only controlled by proper food. And this is where if you want to, it will drum for you to dance. If you want to dance on your own drum, then eat bad food. Otherwise, take care of yourself. And there is a healthy. Uh, this is abnormal CHS infection. So there is this is a cartoon which shows that how the stress is created, how the anxiety is created and what are the things that are responsible for that. So be in a company of good friends. If you are always have a good friend, they take care of yourself, they will not exploit you, you are better off and you will not have stress. So a friend who frowns is better than an enemy who smiles. This is the African proverb. And then togetherness, always remain in group. When you are in group, you will face less challenges than becoming alone and then pearls don't lie on the seashore if you want one you must die for it and stressed out stop now and slow down if you are stressed out don't do because you are now getting into the bad things stop now wait for it slow down breathe slowly and deep relax feel for the peace inside do this for five minutes now you are back under control and move on don't get bogged down by the stress and one of the best way is breathing exercises and meditation and yoga. Nowadays, we have several classes for yoga and meditation in USA. Especially post-COVID, there is a big gathering. A big, lot, lot, lot number of students come to these processes and when they do breathing exercises and all the things, it helps a lot for their mental health. So if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And if you want to go together, then you have to slow down. And then automatically you will have a group of people who will help you, you help them. And that is where say no to loneliness, never be lonely. As soon as you are lonely, you are victim of mental disorders. And finally, yes to togetherness, always be with the people. And however long the night, the dawn will break. So even if you suffer from depression, make sure that there is a dawn. And then the sun is going to come, the sunlight will come. So you don't get depressed and get lost. You, there are solutions for all the mental problems. So you treated the you tread the path which has been already decided by the God. This is a beautiful African proverb. We think that I am doing it. Actually, it is not true because one fine morning you get an accident and you are dead. What you are doing? Nothing. Am I right? So you tread the path which has already been designed by the God. So don't take stress for your path. Because you know, you decide that I want to do PAD, you know, PAD build up stress. But you say, if I, if God has decided me to be PhD, PhD will happen. Now the, there is a paradigm shift in thinking. You know, you want to, oh, I want to take care of this thing. If you say, God will take care of this thing, I will try to work. Now there is a paradigm shift. I will take care of this thing is the ego. High ego, high mental stress. Mm -hmm. If God will take care of it, I will try to do it. Low ego, low no. stress. Simple. You know, and that helps a lot. So, oh, sorry. So, African probably trust God. These challenges will be temporary. There are solutions for every challenge and it is in your own hand. You need to make up your mind to deal with it. And ultimately, it is neither end of the beginning nor the beginning of the end. It is just a temporary stage. Any mental problem in college level is a temporary stage. As a college student, learn to maintain your mental health as a college student. Help others to be part of the journey. Very, muchas gracias. You have seen this so many times. Was it good? Gracias. Was it helpful? Yeah. Um, at least for me.
Hmm? Much. Huh? Very much. Oh, really? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Because I prepared this, I, I have given this to many universities. And I think there is a, we are, once we put all these ideas together, then you start thinking about it. Oh, really? This is, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Because I have to help. If I don't help, then I am useless to the society. Any question? There's, yeah, there are questions. Yeah. Uh, you know, Himina has a question. Yeah, yeah. Maybe only yeah. sharp question. Oh, it's, on, okay. it's, on, it's on the... I just finished my... You gave me one and a half hours, I finished yeah, yeah. three minutes yeah, less. Yeah, yeah. Very sharp. I like that. Jimena <laughs> uh, has a question here. Oh. You want to do it orally, Jimena? Oh. Uh, this is uh, this Jimena's question. Oh. Yash, after yeah. listening to your lecture on mental health indexes, statistics, the question arises, how to make a proper use of nanotechnology and herbal extract for the reduction of stress and anxiety. You know, it is very interesting that there are several herbal extracts and nutraceuticals are available for this. You know, like chamomile, chamomile teeth are there. And if you have anxiety, if you take chamomile tea, it reduces your anxiety. There are many, uh, there are curcumin products are there, which also reduces your anxiety. Your eating disorders can be easily reduced by using appropriate herbs in your food. And the best way is to find out why it is happening? Once you know that what are the stressors, why the stress comes, then deal with it. If you don't know the stressor, then you are hitting in the dark. So you have to analyze yourself, your own analysis. Now, very simple. You want to come to this class at 10 o'clock. Now you know that there is a traffic. So you start 5 minutes early so that you will beat the traffic and come on time. Correct? Very simple. Now, if you don't do that, you start 10 minutes late and then ride your bike far. Boom, 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 boom. That creates stress. So, you have to understand that how to reduce stress by simple techniques, adopting the right technique. So, if I want to, I'm now in hotel. I want to come here at 10 o'clock. So, I have seen, I'm seeing that in last 2-3 days, they are delaying the taxi. So, I told them now, call the taxi at 8.45. So they bring it at 8.15. I am here on time. No stress. So you have to learn how to reduce the stress. But there are several, like I don't know, you have hibiscus. Have you seen hibiscus? Hibiscus is a, oh, there is a flower. I see it everywhere here. We call it different. You know, it's a nice big flower with different colors. You have orange, you have yellow. I see the yellow very prominently here. I want to take mm -hmm. some cutting and take home, steal some cutting from the road. So hibiscus, they create eye, uh, teeth out of hibiscus. They are very soothing. And you can eat those flowers also. You can, those hibiscus flowers, you can eat it. We eat it. Then there is the Osimum basilicum, you know, we call it tulsi, but it is a, uh, Osimum basilicum is a species and there are several species like that. Mint is there. Mint is a good stress reliever. Mm -hmm. If you adopt mint or in the morning, if you simply have a mint and some drink with green, more green to your system, you will not have stress for whole day. If you do the breathing exercises and I do it regularly, you have very less stress because and you, there are hundreds of YouTube videos now, on breathing exercises. Just do it. For 10-15 minutes, you do the breathing exercise you provide adequate oxygen to your lungs and to your brain cells and then your stress is automatically reduced. The reason is when you do the breathing exercise, you concentrate on yourself. You don't let your mind run around. The more you let your mind run around, the more stress is created. Suppose you are sitting here. You think about, oh, I'm going to get the married. I have three boys now. <laughs> Which one will be good? The second one look like, then how the, my children will look like? Oh, will, he, will my child take my features or my <laughs> husband's features? Now you are thinking about future. 
and that creates stress. Am I right? This is very simple stress, you know. So this is the stress which is created, which can be easily avoided. Because God has decided whom you are going to get married. You go and work with 10 people, but ultimately you marry a guy who is destined to marry you, <laughs> decided by the God. Now once you decide that, your stress is relieved. Because you don't worry about 10 guys now. You see somebody with good, you know, in in India, we marry, our divorce rate is very low. It is less than 1%. The reason is we marry the woman and think that this woman I am going to marry for 7 births. So I have to manage that lady or she has to manage me. <laughs> so it is easy. So 7 birth marriage. So not only one birth, but second birth, third birth, fourth birth, fifth birth, sixth birth, seventh birth. So all the women say that this husband is my seventh birth husband. I don't want it. The wife, husband says this is the good wife I got for remaining seven months. I am joking. But once you start thinking that I am treading the path which has already been designed by the God, half of the stress is gone. Make sense? I never, in my life I never planned to be in America. Never. But it so happened that one after the other, I went to England first. When I went to England, I gave my talk. The professor from Israel liked the talk. He said, what is your problem? What is your plan? I said, please tell me why you are asking. He said, I have a postdoc. Can you come? I, I, was, I had a fascination about Israel. So I said, yeah, I will go. So I left my opportunity in America, went to Israel. From Israel, another professor came. He, we had a nice presentation. He said, what's your plan? I said, I have no plans. <laughs> he said, are you interested in America? I said, if there is an opportunity, I will come. I went there. Let the God decide what you, once you leave it to the God, whatever, God, spirit, whatever you want to call, leave it to the ultimate, whatever, your stress is gone. Okay, you don't have to worry about it, you know. It's okay. If it doesn't happen, it is his headache, not my headache. <laughs> I failed the exam because of him. <laughs> no stress. <laughs> so it is a simple thing. But herbal drugs are beautiful. If you go to, I don't know, you have Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese medicine shops here, oriental medicine. But they have 300 different types of teas only. And for different mental conditions, they have different teas. Very soothing. You enjoy those. You know, green tea is very good mm -hmm. for health. But combination of, and half of the flowers in your yard are very good for tea. Add it, like rose. You put a rose in your tea and it will give a nice flavor. That flavor will affect your brain chemicals. You know, jasmine, there is a beautiful jasmine tea. You drink the jasmine tea, the smell itself soothes down your mind calms down your mind and all these flavors, all these herbs are directly affecting the brain chemicals which cause the mental disorders. So did I answer your question? Body dysmorphia is part of the eating disorder. They are all, both are interdependent actually. Eating disorder itself is a mental order and mental order causes eating disorders. Because once you are in depression, you start randomly eating. You don't care. If you see the free food, eat it as much as you want. And that's where this, uh, both the, all these, if you see the symptoms of all these anxiety, suicidal, um, eating disorders, all these addictions, they are all interconnected. And they are all directly related to the brain chemicals. The brain controls this. Suppose you have a bottle of wine here. I have never touched wine in my life. It doesn't attract me. But if Professor Caesar drinks wine every day, his mind will start thinking, now when the bottle will be open, when will I will have my pain? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. It's very normal. I have never touched it. So hundreds of bottles, you keep it, I will never, it will not even come into my mind that this is for me. Like non vegetarian I am a vegetarian. So if I see meat, it doesn't make any juices in my mouth. 
but i have friends who look at it and then say ah now i have to take it <laughs> so that is how you it's the mind control you take you know there are many people who drink alcohol and still live longer no anxiety no why because they control it their mind is in their control and if your mind is in your control so do whatever your mind says but not do because all other people are doing so i do it then your mind is not in control you are controlled by somebody else if you want to eat you eat but if it is a tv ad which says that you must eat then your mind is controlled by the tv ad you are not controlling your mind and this is we are controlling our own mind to make sure that i will prevent mental disorder in our body you will prevent it does that make sense did i answer that question or not i don't know thanks a lot thanks a lot okay, they have already thanks, left thanks a lot sir very long Ah, of things. Okay. okay. So, uh, muchas yeah, gracias. Yeah. Microphones are open. Uh, I don't know if time for any more questions. Yeah. I am. Any more questions? I have nothing to do. You can open plans. your microphones. Pueden abrir los micrófonos o pueden escribirlas. Do you have any questions? Comments? <laughs> okay. If there is no more questions, please let's think. Can I ask questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. So all this discussion, one and a half hour. What do you think is easy to adopt in life? Mm, easy. The first things that you said at the at the, at the very beginning of the day, to uh, to to put big goals, big aims. I think that is uh, yeah. easy. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Lower but not easy failure is crime. Dream. This is it. I want to be. I, I don't know. I want to be the principal of this university. Also. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> Nothing wrong in it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my. my, my yeah. Goal. What do you think? What was? What the take home message for you? What is it? Take home message. Take home. Take Means home. after listening to all these things. The message for the class. Oh. <laughs> what strike your mind? Oh, this is what I should do. Have you felt like something which is? Oh, uh, many things. <laughs> oh. uh, because um, well, when I was doing my PhD, I suffered some of these mental problems, and those things that you mentioned about food, about exercise, about uh, uh, flowers, all the things help me to change, to train my brain because I understand that I needed to train my brain because I was uh, in a dark uh, room yeah. and only the, the only person that can uh, save me was myself. Yeah. Nobody. So uh, it was very interesting being here today. And stay in this uh, picture. Talk. Big talk, oh, big thank talk, you. Because many things, uh, I remember many things, and all things that, that you say they have sense for me. Yeah. And and it's it's a very interesting topic about education, for example, because we are teachers. Yeah. How we can help our students Correct. for all these things yeah. and make uh, sense for me and uh, learn many things about that. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I think that most of the people uh, doing a PhD has uh, some when or somewhere suffering this kind of uh, yeah. disorders. Yeah. yeah. Myself, of course. <laughs> but uh, you tell there is a here you have, uh, you, you have talked about useful tools to face this kind of yeah, what do you think Spanish yeah. Spanish yo pienso que son problemas que siempre han estado, ¿sí? solo que hemos olvidado 
eh, desde nuestro interior y como desde el contexto eh, comunitario, cultural y demás, poder resolverlos. Entonces nos hacemos como un ser humano. Lo que tú dices es compartir y no estar solamente uno. ¿Qué piensas de, de, de cuál es el mensaje más importante de toda esta charla? Si pues, tienen algún comentario sobre eso. Take care and be the the You know what I my request to you all is that this is going to be I am sharing this presentation with you all. Use this while you teach. So if suppose you are teaching every day, so you take at least one small portion of that presentation and just throw it in front of the student. Oh, do you see? You face this problem, and then the students start thinking, Oh, really? I got my mistake. Now. Just taking one small thing during our class, not only concentrating, suppose I am teaching physics, then 24 by 7 I keep on telling physics, physics, physics. But one small slide showing something for them, for their life. Now you are changing, you know, there is a paradigm shift in teaching. You are not simply teaching knowledge, but you are also helping them for their life, for their improvement in their life. And our teaching has to be something added every time. It's like, you know, spices. You eat your food, big food, but add a little bit of spice, so makes food better. So this is the spice will help them to get rid of, you know, spices are good for brain. So get rid of their problems or if suppose you say that, hey, you know, sometimes people have suicide attitude. These are the symptoms. Put up the Now, if one of the student has suicide attitude in their mind, they will come and talk to you and say that, Sir, what you told, I was thinking about that. And it comes in my mind. Then now you identified that you have a student who has some problem. But not necessarily addressing student, but one small thing. Oh, do you ride the bikes or you don't ride the bikes? When I ride the bike, my stress is reduced. Now the student will start thinking, Oh, I never thought about this. Just by simply riding bike, if my stress is relieved, why not? Simple solution for complex problems. And it is possible. But, you know, you have 45 slides, suppose, one hour. Put one slide for something which is not in the education, but in the life style or life lesson. Just pick up some proverb. You know, like, I love my body, I enjoy it, and I cherish it. Simple statement. But once you put it, then people who have the eating disorder, they will start thinking that this is correct. Why should I be worried about this? So you give a direction to their thinking. That's why you use this. All my presentations are within. You have free access to everything. Use it for benefit of the student, benefit of the people and benefit of the society. Gracias. Muchas. Thank you, Professor Chasman, for this very enlightening talk. Um, not only talk about nanotechnology, <laughs> but this is very important part of our lives. So thank you very much. Um, uh, oh, oh, there is a bit from David. Joan David or Martin. I think each one of us should understand that during the process of creating a scientific knowledge, our humanity influence that process and caring about it. It is the clue in having good results in investigation. That is correct. Yeah, That's exactly. what I was saying, yeah. Thank you, Thank Joan, you. David. Juan, David. Juan, Juan, David. <laughs> okay. I don't know why Spanish people <laughs> <laughs> pronounce differently. Juan, David. <laughs> I'm just joking. You know, the French people are even worse. We were asking cross the duo, cross the duo, cross the duo, and it was right in front of all. Uh, but they pronounced it differently. We were yeah. pronouncing English and they were pronouncing French. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. See you tomorrow. And, yeah. Uh, gracias a los que nos acompañaron por aquí. Hasta mañana.
Ok, gracias. Muchas gracias. gracias.